Welcome back to this tutorial on making an action RPG game. Now I know I said I would cover dialogue uh, in the next video, but actually I would like to go back and look at one more thing to do with throwing pots. At the moment, our system allows us to pick up pots and throw them, and then when they land on the ground they become obstacles again that can be picked up and thrown again. But this is actually a little bit problematic from the standpoint of puzzle design. See, pots are not just things that you can throw, they're also obstacles. And at some point, we may want to make puzzles involving the character pushing pots around or using them to block things. And the ability to throw the pot wherever we want it is going to be a big issue in creating puzzles like that. I think what we should do is have the pot break up into pieces after being thrown, which is actually how they work in the Zelda games. This makes a lot of things much easier for us and is also thematically appropriate because of course if you throw a clay pot on the ground it is going to break. So let's go into the pot scene. Right now it has a single sprite which is being taken from this atlas texture. Now I don't think it's actually necessary to have both of these. I was sort of thinking that maybe it's randomized or maybe the ones with the stripes have items inside or something. Let's start by just reducing this texture to a single pot. And then if we look at the sprite, the number of horizontal frames is now one. Uh, what I think we're going to do is we're actually going to create two child sprites. We're going to make the pot split in half when it is thrown. So we're going to have left and right. And then I'm going to change this node to just be a node 2D. So the left sprite will be this texture. And in fact, we are going to have two horizontal frames. So this is the left frame. And then for the right sprite, we will simply use frame one. And I'm going to hide the collision shape 2D so that I can move this over here and then move it back to the center. So we have the sprite, but now it's made up of a left and a right half. The next step is to take care of the animation. We could do this in the carry animator, but it's possible that we might want to have multiple ways for the pot to be destroyed. For example, um, maybe if you throw it on the ground, it splits in two, but if you throw it into the water, it makes a splash or something. So I'm going to create a second animator, animation player, and let's call it destruction animator. And we will add an animation to destruction animator called shatter. How shatter will work is the pot will split into two pieces. So we'll go ahead and add the positional transforms for both the left and right sprites. I think the pot should shatter pretty quickly, so let's do 0.1 seconds. And at the end of that 0.1 seconds, the left sprite will move four pixels further to the left, so minus eight. And the right sprite will move four more pixels to the right, plus eight. We take a look at this. Okay, so the pot splits in half. And I think we would also like for it to fade out so that it vanishes. And we can do this by changing the modulation of the sprite node, which contains the left and right nodes. I'm going to add modulate as a property to animate. Uh, modulation starts at white, which means that there's no change. And then at the end of the animation, we are going to change the alpha from 255 to zero, which will make the sprite completely transparent. Now if we play that, we see, yep, it just shatters and fades away. Last thing, we want the pot to be destroyed. So what we're going to do is we are going to add a call method track on the pot. And we're going to add Q free. You can see from the description, Q free queues a node for deletion at the end of the current frame. And this method ensures that it's safe to delete the node in contrast to object.free, which frees it instantly and that should destroy the pot. Now all we need to do is trigger this animation. Let's go into the pot script and landed. The idea being you call this when the pot lands on the ground again. We don't have any water right now, so we're not going to worry about that. But if we had water, we could add something to check whether the pot is over water when it lands. But what we're actually going to do is we're just going to call destruction animator. Oh, I should add an on ready var for that. Okay, so when we call landed, we're going to have destruction animator play the shatter animation. And at the end of the sh shatter animation, the pot will be destroyed. The last thing we need to do is we go into the throne animation and right here at the end of the throne animation, we're going to want to call the landed method because when the pot is done being thrown, that's when it lands. So I will add a track, call method, pot, insert key, landed. 
we pick up the pot, we throw it, and it is gone. And you can see if we walk over it, it is no longer there. Well, that's all for this video. And now we're able to pick up, throw, and destroy pots. And next time we will talk about dialogue. Thanks for watching.